episode, we're going to look at how an Oracle Mobile Cloud Service mobile developer specifically configures an Android app and the MCS Mobile backend to register and receive push notifications. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Thanks for joining us. In order to set up an Android mobile application for MCS push notifications, there's essentially three broad tasks we need to undertake. Firstly, we need to register with Google so that Google knows we have an Android application that wants to listen for push notifications. Second, we must register our Android app in the MCS mobile backend using the API key that Google gives us as a result. And third, we must configure our Android mobile app to register for push notifications using the sender ID, also known as the project ID, and then receive and handle push notifications as they arrive. Each of these three broad tasks has a number of steps, so what we're going to do now is take a look at them each in turn. Because Google is responsible for getting the notification to your Android device, your developers will need to register with Google's GCM or Firebase FCM so that Google knows about your application, and in turn you've enabled the push notification service. In order to register and receive push notifications on an Android app, Google requires that Android developers set up a developer account and project with push notifications enabled. This is done through Google's developer console or the Firebase console, where you either use a trial account or purchase an account for production purposes. Now, follow this link to read the GCM documentation page on how to set up an account via Google services. If you do decide to use the Google Developer Console over the Firebase approach, overall the steps to be completed are to create a Google account, to create a project, to enable the push notification API, and create a server public API access key. Having done that, you have, should have recorded down two things. Firstly, the project ID, something like the 12 digit number you see here, which will be used by your Android mobile application to register for push notifications with Google's GCM at runtime, referred to as the sender ID. And second, the API key, something like the 39 character string here, which will be registered with the MCS mobile backend so that the MCS push notification services can call Google's GCM services using that key to identify itself and send out push notifications to the registered devices. Having configured the Google side, we now need to configure the MCS side for push notifications with Google's Android push notification services. To do this, we register the Android app with our MCS mobile backend. First, we open the MCS mobile backend in the MCS user interface and select the notifications, then register options. From here, we create a new client application entry. As we're registering an Android app, we select the Android option. Then we give the app a name, which will be shown in MCS. For the application ID, this should be the package name from your Android app's Android manifest XML file. Then lead the send method as the default XMPP option, unless you have an explicit reason to use HTTP. And then enter the encoded API key you recorded earlier from the Google project, as well as the project ID, also known as the sender ID. And then on selecting OK, this has the MCS side configured. The final piece of work to do is to configure your actual app for push notifications using MCS. Now this breaks into four areas of work. First, installing the MCS mobile client SDK. Then configuring the Android manifest XML file. Next, writing code to register the app for push notifications, and finally, handle any notifications that arrive. In a previous episode, we covered how to configure an Android app with the MCS Mobile Client SDK, so I'm not going to cover that again here. But it is worth noting, however, for push notifications, that besides needing the default MCS jars of Oracle Mobile Cloud Mobile Shared and the IDM Mobile SDK jar, you will in turn require the specific jar Oracle Cloud Mobile Notifications. In turn, in terms of installing the SDK, don't forget you must copy the application ID from the registered app in the MCS user interface mobile backend settings page to your Oracle Mobile Cloud config XML file. Next, you need to configure your Android application's Android manifest XML file with the required permissions for push notifications. In addition, you must substitute your application's package name in the following two locations. 
Also within the Android Manifest XML file, within the Applications node, we also need to add the following entries. When the developer calls the MCS SDK device registration functions for push, the MCS registration intent service intent assists in the automatic device registration with GCM. Behind the scenes, it registers the device with MCS and associates the user's GCM registration token as well as subscribing to GCM. Separately, the purpose of the GCM token refresh listener service is if GCM subsequently updates the device token after registration, such as a token expiry, this service listens for this event from GCM and updates the token as required. You might also note the GCM token refresh listener service is flagged in error. This is because it has a dependency on the Google Play services, which I'll add as a library to my application's build Gradle file here. From here, you need to add code for registering your app for push notifications at runtime. The MCS Mobile Client SDK provides APIs to make this relatively simple. When your application first comes up, you use the following code example to register your app with GCM via the SDK. So what I have here is some pre-existing code to get the mobile default back in and authenticate the user. Inside of this, we'll now put our notifications logic. With the authentication out of the way, then what I use is the default mobile backend to get a handle on the notifications object. Then we make a call to the notifications initialize method, passing in the current activity as this, and the sender ID, essentially the project ID we were given by GCM during the registration process with Google's developer console. Alternatively, if you know who the user is in your application, you can make the following alternative call to the notifications class calling the initialize with user method, passing in the activity object via this, the sender ID, and the username and password. The second call is preferable over the first as if the latter, you want to send a notification to a particular user rather than the device, this call successfully records the user in MCS along with the device token, so you can do this. Finally, in terms of your app, you need to write code to receive and handle any push notifications from Google that was relayed from MCS. Now, as an Android programmer, you should be aware that there is a number of ways to do this, such as using a wakeful broadcast receiver or a vanilla broadcast receiver for more simple needs. For purposes of demonstration here in the video, we'll implement a simple broadcast receiver that logs the incoming push notifications to the console. Obviously, you'd want to do something more than this, like display an alert to the user. To do this and make use of this broadcast receiver, we must first configure this class in the Android Manifest XML file as follows. And then, of course, we need to create an instance of the class, an instance of the broadcast receiver, as you can see in the following example. Remember again, this isn't a sophisticated implementation, it's just going to log the incoming messages to the console. So at runtime, the onReceive method here will be called within the GCM message receiver and the message payload can be extracted and displayed as you see fit. And that's it. That concludes the setup side for Android push notifications, a three-part exercise in configuring Google services, configuring MCS, and configuring and writing code in your Android app. I encourage you to stay tuned to learn how to raise push notifications for MCS user interfaces in the next set of videos. Thanks for joining us.